can cut it. Okay. I, can cut it. I started. I can cut whatever um, doesn't work. And so, and we're back. Yes, we are yes, here. We are back. How are you doing? How's it been going? Um, good. You? Yeah, it's been going good. I've gotten, we've gotten some good feedback about our last episode. So we're ready to come at you with another one. I know. I think that the problem for me right now is that I have so many things I want to talk about yeah. that it's hard to like put them in order of importance. <laughs> They're all important. They are all important. <laughs> they all are important. They are. Um, yeah, but you know, the, I guess the topic of the hour at the moment is these extra doses mm -hmm. of vaccine that's on the top of everybody's mind. There was a bunch of editorials that came out yeah. this week, even, um, and last week about, um, boosters and how many are we going to need? And, um, you know, how long is this going to go on for and people really trying to continue to understand what we need to do for COVID. Right. And also that um, people seem to be taking on the attitude of what ofs. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like whatever COVID, we're over it. We're over there's everybody. Of, over yeah, it. there's a little bit of complacency. And mm -hmm. I think that, um, you know, although not everyone who is eligible has been vaccinated and obviously vaccines are not available in an equitable way to everybody. Um, I feel like because we do have, people have been infected and um, survived and also the people that are vaccinated, I think people are now like, oh, well, we've been dealing with COVID. Right. So they're starting to become a little bit more complacent in the sense that we got this. That's right, that's right. And we just got to learn to live with it. We got to learn right, to live. With it. Right. And sadly, there are, you know, millions of people that cannot learn to live with it. That's right. You know, they are gone. That's right. And we need to make sure that we continue to keep our guard up so that we don't, we lose as few as possible, ideally zero. But um, yeah, so this complacency, I think, is um, a little bit scary to me. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot well, of these editorials too. Right. Well, I think that there's just so much, there's so much confusion. I think, you know, we yeah. can talk about, I shared with you earlier about the taxi, taxi ride that I had. <laughs> <laughs> the taxi driver was like, yeah, yeah. I think the government is just making this out to be bigger than it actually is. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I basically was like, doctors are on their hands and knees begging you to get vaccinated. Yeah. Like. Yeah, but the government, you know, and it was yeah. like, you know, there's, there's more to that. And we can, we can do a whole episode on that conversation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and we should, <laughs> we actually should, but. Well, and it but, sounds to me like that particular driver too, he's not the person that we need to convince to get a third or fourth dose. We need right. to convince him to get his first. That's right. That's absolutely right. And so, um, but it was just an interesting conversation because, mm -hmm. because I was like, wow, yeah, you know, like that we're really pitted against, mm -hmm. you know, what we know as physicians, as a scientist, mm -hmm. you know, what, what can help protect you. Right. But this, but the noise mm -hmm. has just drowned out yeah. the importance of, of like, of like how dangerous this thing is. And um, it's just, it's just really unfortunate. There's a lot of work to do. There's a lot yeah. of work to do trying to, trying to figure this out. And so, yeah, um, I want to introduce the concept before we go on. We want to let our listeners know that uh, Amy and I are going to create a graveyard for, <laughs> uh, for terms. Yes. And so, so far in our podcast, like before, before we get started, I know we're not going to talk about this in particular, but like, I would like to um, have the inaugural ceremony of the graveyard with the words non-compliance and non-adherence. So I would like to have those in the graveyard. Okay. We put um, in the last put, episode, we put herd immunity, herd, herd immunity. immunity. We, we didn't get rid of it, we just changed it to community immunity. It's community immunity. Mm -hmm. And what is the word that we're going to put into the graveyard today? Um, well, okay. So we also, I think, 
And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to continue with the, I'm going to dig even deeper on this one, mm -hmm. but booster was something we laid to rest last time. And I'd like to continue to just dig it down deeper, <laughs> <laughs> pile more dirt on top of it. So, um, because the term booster, like we talked about last time, um, I think to a lot of people means finale or final dose. Um, so I had suggested that we talk about doses. Like I've had one dose, I've had two doses, and then I got a third dose, which some people are calling booster. Um, and I, I hesitate to use booster continually because then people are like, well, now I need a second booster. I would like mm -hmm. to call that the fourth dose. That's right. <laughs> and that we might need a fifth. Um, and then if we, this is key, if we have a vaccine that is made against a new variant, that will actually be a new dose, <laughs> like a new version of the vaccine. And we would more or less start back at dose one of new variant. Um, that, that's obviously in the future that I think that that's probably something that if I had, if I had a crystal ball, <laughs> and it was working properly, we probably would see that in our future. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but, you know, it's getting a little bit ahead of myself. But so I think the word booster, the term booster, not that it's inappropriate in some situations, I just don't want people to think of it as the final dose and the finale and that we're done with COVID and we're done with the pandemic if they get a booster. So that's why so it's not a it's not a bad term. It just can be, I think, used in a way that suggests the end game. Does that? Do you? Agree? Yeah, okay. I I agree. I think I mean even even I, you know, as a as a physician, when we were doing these things, we had the two doses. Yeah, and then people were talking about, okay, we need a third boost, you know, a third dose, and mm -hmm. you know, that's going to be the booster. I was like, all right, we're done. All right. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Then we're, then we're done. See? And then, and then yeah. it's like, wait, there might be a need for a fourth dose. And I was like, yeah. come on. <laughs> right. You're like, no, no, no. I already had the finale. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's over. Yeah, exactly. Like, what do you mean? And, and so I think that, yes. um, I think that what, what we want people to understand, I think what has come out of this in conversations has been a couple of things. And then we can decide how we're going to approach the, the yeah. issues. I think number one, folks who are really excited to get the vaccine mm -hmm. are now like getting vaccine fatigue, <laughs> right? Yeah. They're just getting, they're like, okay, how many times do I have to go do this? Because it's not trivial. It's, it's not simple to get right. a vaccine right. when you're working, you have a family you're dealing with, you yep. know, like there's, you know, vaccine sites are shutting down, right? Yeah. You know, now perhaps now there's insurance that you need in order for you to get a vaccine, right? So like yeah. now there's a whole bunch of obstacles that weren't right. there maybe perhaps in the beginning. And you're just kind right. of like, oh, I did my part. I did my part. I got my vaccine. I don't want to have any more of these things. Right. So right. there's, there's part, there's that part of vaccine fatigue, if you will. Yeah. I think that there's also, there's also the misunderstanding of the things that we tried to clarify in our last episode about like, well, we've got 70% of the people vaccinated. Right. right. Like, didn't, that's what they said that we were trying to go for was 70%. So we should, we're good. I don't need to, but again, mm -hmm. that threshold doesn't count if you if you can still get vaccinated and also at how transmissible COVID variants have demonstrated that they right. are. Right, right. Yeah, and this, I, I would argue, again, not on evidence, but um, in order for us to be protected, that level, because it's so contagious, so transmissible, it's mm -hmm. probably going to be need to be more like 90%. Right, exactly. I'm sorry. And so <laughs> I think that um, the other thing that came up in the last episode that I think come come through with the with with the doses, I'm not going to say the B word today, um, with the different with the doses is that um, well, if we have to keep getting these doses, then that means the vaccine's not working, right? And so um, yes. there's another graveyard yes. term we have to put yes. into this episode, which yes. is breakthrough infections that That's also right. to go in the graveyard mm -hmm. because it's very confusing to folks because it it's it sounds as if you know it's breaking through the vaccine. Right. Um, these infections, and that's not actually how it works. You want to share a little bit yeah. about it? Yeah, I agree with that. So, um, 
in our in our terminology graveyard, which I also like to call tearing down the terminology. Yes, that's right. Tearing like down it. the terminology. Tear it down. Tear it down. <laughs> um, yeah, the breakthrough infection, because I think when people hear that term, they are assuming that there has been a failure. And um, and and again, it's because there's you know a lot of I think confusion as to how science works. We in the beginning, we being like, you know, physicians, scientists, immunology community, we didn't know, would there be people that were still susceptible to becoming sick that they got the vaccine? Um, I would say that it would, it makes sense that people would still be able to have a milder version of an illness um, because not all vaccines completely stop infection before it starts. I'm going to use a fancy term. Uh-oh. <laughs> Buckle up. Hold on, everybody. I know. Hold on. So we call that sterilizing immunity. Mm -hmm. When you can, when you get a vaccine and you cannot become infected at all, it's like done. You're like sterilized completely. Like you've bleached the whole thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? That's actually not common with most vaccines. Vaccines are um, to prevent serious illness and death. Um, and it would be wonderful if we did not get infected at all or have mild illness, but that is not something that all vaccines promise. Some of them work that way, but not all of them work that way. So I think to me, when people say breakthrough infection, knowing that not all vaccines are sterilizing. And I know that term is different in like say reproductive capacity, which is, mm -hmm. that's not how we're, we're, we're using it here. It just means that it would stop infection. Um, so breakthrough infection just it, 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 to the general public means failure, but to, to people in science, I think that means that you're getting um, an infection, but it's gonna prevent death and hospitalization or serious illness. What do you, what do you think about that? Yeah. I mean, I think, I, I think I look at it as like, it's not, it's not breaking through necessarily. Mm -hmm. It would break through if it was a hundred percent, if the efficacy of the, of the vaccine was a hundred percent and people were inf getting infected, that's more to break through infection to me. Yeah. Do you know, um, right. as opposed to, you know, we're not at a hundred percent. And right. so what you're looking at, those folks that are getting infected yeah. are, 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 they're actually like, we're actually seeing what, since they're, they're, they're infected, but they're mild infections Yeah. or maybe even moderate, but you're not severely ill, which is the whole point of the vaccine. And they're not dying unless, well, unless there's like, say, Colin Powell, like a cancer. Right. That's right. And so, and so, I mean, and I think, you know, I, I don't want to say a hundred, nothing's a hundred percent. And, and right. I'm sure that there are those cases where there are folks right. who were vaccinated, didn't right. have comorbidities right. and, and, and maybe, yeah. maybe died. But the, but the point being that yeah. that number is lower in vaccinated people than if you're not vaccinated. And I think yeah. that's a hard thing to process, right? Is that like, if it's because it's not zero, it feels like it's not helping. So like that right. same taxi driver conversation, he said to me that the percentage of death in vaccinated people is the same as in unvaccinated people. Yeah. And I said, nope, we can Google it today. You can, you can just Google it right now. <laughs> you can see that that's absolutely not true. Now, what right. is true mm -hmm. is the curve is not flat. That is a hundred percent true. Right. That's true. Right. But, it, but the thing is that the difference is completely, you can't. And after I did that, he was like, all right. I was like, so can we agree that you yeah. reluctantly believe that yeah. the vaccines work? So and he said, he said, yes, he was like reluctant about it, but he had to be able to say that right. based on that, they, they do work. And so let's go to well, so hang on, before we yeah. go there, I, sure, sure, sure. I, I'm not done. I have an analogy, oh, I'm sorry. That, but Thank no, it's you. okay. I, I just, I, I worked on this, so yes, I, I want to make sure. So two things before I go there. Number one, I love the fact that you took on 
your taxi driver. And oh, you yeah. were like, oh yeah, you're driving me around town. I'm going to Google <laughs> it. We're looking it up. Because I think the fact that you are not afraid of conversing about complicated issues with anyone is admirable. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, you know, because a lot of people will not approach, you know, I guess issues that, you know, there's probably disagreement. So I, first of all, that's cool. Second of all, did you then drive to a vaccine clinic? Is that where you ended your time? Oh, no, no, no. We were, we were like in the throes <laughs> of our debate. I mean, Nietzsche was dropped. <laughs> World War II was dropped. I mean, it was a whole bunch of, there was a whole bunch of conversations so there. We'll but save he, it for but another he, podcast, but so he might. Okay. 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 So, so when we get to breakthrough infection, this is a really good analogy. And I can't say that I did not really make this one up. I have read about it in multiple or read it in multiple places, but I want to drop it here because I think it's really important for people to understand. Okay. So when you get vaccinated, if you become infected with that illness, you know, and likely it's a mild illness, you, you do have a level of protection. It's gonna keep you from getting severe illness and death. The analogy is this is how seat belts work, right? You get into your car, you put on your seat belt. Your seat belt is not going to guarantee you that you don't get into a car crash, right? Your car may still sadly crash into another car. But that seatbelt is a layer of protection that will likely keep you from serious injury and death. Now, you might get, you know, some harm, you might get into a car accident, or you might not. But the point is the seatbelt is a layer of protection that you are adding to keep to your body from serious harm and death if you were to get into an accident. So I like to think of the vaccine as a seatbelt. It's not going to 100% prevent me from getting into a crash mm -hmm. um, or coming into contact with the virus or maybe even getting mild illness, but it's likely to keep me from serious injury and death. That's and right. then to further this <laughs> analogy, let's say your the additional doses you get, it's like you're adding maybe a, another airbag. <laughs> <laughs> another layer of protection or cushion around mm -hmm. you. Does that, what do you think about that? Yeah, I like it. I think, I think that's, I think it's a great analogy because I think that the point, the point being is that we are trying mm -hmm. to figure out a way to keep you as protected as possible. Yeah. And we cannot guarantee a hundred percent about you right. being able to come out of the situation unscathed. Right. But what we can say mm -hmm. is that if you are not interested in being scathed <laughs> <laughs> at all. Yeah. Like this is your best, this is your best bet because right. what, 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 what will end up happening? Right. So you, so like, let's say in our, in our zone of complacency. At yeah. The moment, where everybody's yeah. like, COVID's not a thing. And everybody's, everybody, everybody's back to, back to normal. I mean, I have to say, I, I, there are, there are, there are even government entities, honestly, um, I will refrain from explaining which ones, but there are government entities, people with government jobs, where the yeah. leadership in those jobs yeah. are basically saying the pandemic is over. Nah. Yeah. And I'm like, are you kidding? Like yeah. this is such a bad narrative. We're not, it's nowhere close to being over. No, no. People are still dying. I people will say, are yeah. Still, people are still being hospitalized. Yep. And like maybe the people around you, there are more people in your life that you know that have gotten vaccinated and you that gives you a feeling of confidence. But right. there, again, like we said last time, there are pockets where that's not true. Right. And we're not even, we're still not thinking about the children, the under five. Do right. you know? And like right. and those folks, none of those guys are vaccinated. Right. And the number of children, at least in New York, 
who are who are vaccinated is it's low. It's low. It's in the 30s, 30 percent. You know, in some places it's a little higher. In some demographics, it's a little bit higher. But overall, it's about in the 30, 40 percent range. Right. Um, for kids between five to five to eleven. And so I think that um, what's really important to understand is that if in this place of complacency where you're feeling really confident, mm -hmm. um, what can happen is that if you are if you are vaccinated, you're good. Like I'm not like there's no there's you're you're as protected as you possibly can be. Right. But if you are like me with a young child at home mm -hmm. uh, who can't get vaccinated, then I'm I'm actually still quite paranoid. I put my mask on. I'm sanitizing oh, yeah. everywhere because yeah. it's like I don't want to bring that home to him. I don't want it to come. If if I get sick, that's one thing. But right. I don't want to be the reason why my baby's sick. Right. And and so for mm -hmm. me, that's that's enough. Now, when he gets to a place where he's going to be able to be vaccinated, yeah, you know, then my and my anxiety level is go is going to go down. Now, what would happen is that if I let's say I've had, I've had my three doses and, um, my husband has had his three doses mm -hmm. and let's say, let's just say that, um, out, out of the data that comes a uh, fourth dose is required. And I decide not to get that fourth dose mm -hmm. for whatever, for whatever reason, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I'm tired. Vaccine fatigue, sick of it, whatever. <laughs> um, what, what that means is that anyone that I come in contact with has a higher chance mm -hmm. of getting ill mm -hmm. that's not vaccinated for whatever reason, if they're vulnerable, right? Mm -hmm. They have a higher chance as opposed to um, if I did get that booster, mm -hmm. then again, I'm back at that 95, you know, not booster, that next dose, I'm going to yeah. get, I'm going to be up at that 95%. The reason why that's important for me um, as a healthcare provider is because all my patients are vulnerable. <laughs> they all have comorbidities. They're all sick. I got people mm. with autoimmune diseases, you know, yeah. who are older um, or younger because I take care yeah. of children and I take care of adults. And so for me, I have to continue to stay with my immune system at that level of getting ready for that marathon, like you explained last time, because, yeah. because I don't want to be responsible yeah, for passing that to somebody else who might be more vulnerable. And what happens is that because the immune response wanes over time, yep. um, I just become more, more able, if you will, to carry that virus around, even if it might not be hurting me, it still doesn't mean that I can't, it, it won't hurt somebody else. And what right. the point of taking the next doses for me yeah. would, be, would be to minimize right. my ability to transmit it to somebody else that's right. more vulnerable. Now, if you, if you, and this is the confusing thing, and if anybody's interested, we'll put it in the show notes, that article sure. from, from the Atlantic. Um, but there was an, a, a really great article um, that uh, we read um, from the Atlantic that kind of explained all the confusion around these doses, right? And the yeah. kind of state of the universe that we're in with, you know, we're not even, you know, scientists are not agreeing, doctors are not agreeing, you know, the government's not agreeing, everybody's yeah. kind of on a different fence. And I think that what we're trying to clarify for you is that mm -hmm. what the reason why the, the reason why taking extra doses is a thing in the first place. Like that's just the the bottom line of what we're trying to explain. Mm -hmm. Did you want to add? Yeah, you want to, with those additional doses, you're just allowing your immune system, really the, the bottom line is more antibody, that protein that we have in our blood that gloms onto the virus as soon as it enters. And we call it neutralizing because it just kind of covers it completely and it doesn't allow it to infect like your lungs or whatever. So the more antibody, the better our chances are the more antibody in our blood, the better our chances are at not becoming ill or having very, very mild illness. Um, I have another analogy. Bring it. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. So, Let's do it. So when, uh, so when you get a vaccine, our immune system responds and we have um, multiple cell types that respond and 
some of them make memory, which means that they can train and they recognize the pathogen. So if they see it again, they're going to respond more quickly. So those are memory. And then we talked about how there's a certain cell that makes antibody and that antibody level in our blood stays up really high. That's antibody is the cash. Okay. You got cash in your blood. You got cash in your wallet. You got a ton of cash. You can buy stuff. <laughs> So as soon as the virus comes in, you got a bunch of cash, you throw the cash, the antibody at the virus, gloms around it. It's quick, right? You, open, you get your wallet, you get the cash out, you pay for something right away. If your antibody level over a couple months, like six months is what we're seeing now, is kind of low. You don't have a lot of cash. Well, if you've had the vaccine, we know that you have memory. Memory cells are kind of like having to go to the bank. <laughs> Right. If you want your money, you take your memory cells, takes them a couple of days to kind of rev up, you know, like a day or two, which doesn't seem like a lot, but cash is quicker. So memory cells, you got to walk to the bank, you got to talk to the teller, you got to get your antibody, they got to count it out, you got to mm -hmm. make it, maybe they have to go to the vault, you know, who knows what, but antibody, right, right. in the wallet, ready to go. Right. So so that, that's kind of the way I explain it to people is the antibody is like tons of cash. You got a bunch of cash in your wallet. You got a bunch of antibody in your blood. You're going to just, you know, get rid of that virus immediately. Now you might have a bank card, your memory, but it's going to take a little while. Not, I mean, it's quicker than if it, if you don't have memory, that's like a couple weeks. That's like, you have to like fill out the paperwork yeah. to get a bank account. That's right. Got to get the ID card. Anyway, oh, that's the wrong ID. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. So, yeah. so that, so it's like, I use the bank kind of bank banking analogy for that kind of thing. So antibody is the cash in the blood. You want to keep your cash levels high so you can fight off the virus. Yeah. right away that's right that's i made right. that one up what do you think of that is that i like it? it no i like it i think <laughs> it makes, makes sense to me it makes sense to me i think that like what we want to be able to do is that like convince like acknowledge your frustration at the yep. confusion of messaging yep. uh let you all know that f the the way that we're using fully vaccinated amy and i do not agree with that definition a fully yeah. vaccinated because, because that again makes it sound like the end game has already it, been done it sounds like the end game and we are still learning about covid i mean i think that's so yeah. important to continue to say yeah. we don't understand it 100 percent yet we're just starting to dig in to understanding long covid right right and so like we we have so much more that we need to understand about this. Yeah. So the thing is, what we're trying to do is to today. We can't. We're not living in the future at the moment. Right. Today. No what can you ball. do today <laughs> so that you can stay alive, mm -hmm. stay unill as much as possible, stay yeah. protected as yeah. much as possible, stay in your car and not be ejected <laughs> onto the highway. Use your, your cash. Car. Okay. Use your cash and, and, and just keep you here. We just want to keep you here. Right. And yeah. so, you know, fully vaccinated for us at the moment, we don't know what that means yet because we're still trying to understand what this yeah. virus is doing. And right. so at the moment, it looks like you have to at least get three, at least everybody should get at least three. I know that there's some discussion with the pediatric literature right now, and they're kind of going toward giving giving the, the same number of doses. Yeah. Um, so just stay yep. tuned for what becomes available. Right. But we've been here before in terms of having to take boosters, having to take extra doses, mm -hmm. having to take a vaccine every year, which is the yep. flu shot. Like none of this is new stuff, right? right. This is just the way that this is the way that we we have right. to live. And I think I think that um you know we you know the unfortunate thing is the noise in the in the media the noise in the in yeah. the messaging it's 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 really terrible and and the thing is that you know there are some there was some noise on twitter of i think it was a week ago by a, oh i think there always like a, is noise on twitter yes there's always noise on twitter but i think it was it was just like a high ranking um mm. public official who was just like 
you know, we can't stop people from gathering. Like we just, we just have to get, like, we just have to keep it moving and everybody's going to get infected. And I, I push back on that. I, I yeah. kind of feel like yeah. just, we don't have to all get infected. That's not true. I <laughs> we agree. We have to all get infected. This is not like chicken pox time back in the, back in the 70s. Exactly. I'm where we had chicken pox parties, you know, like this is not the same thing, you know? Right. A hundred percent of the podcast hosts here have not been infected. And I'm not planning to try to get that. 100%. I mean, I don't yes, want it. The, 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 the number we're look, working with is two, but still. <laughs> the N is two, but, but it's 100%. It's 100%, and, which is a whole other can of worms. I'm not to get infected. I don't want my, I just, my, right. honestly, my whole, my whole anxiety about it is yeah. more about my son than, than, than about me, you know, I completely I mean, agree with you. I'm, I'm just thankful so worried that I about have... him getting that or like having, you know, the, 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 the multi-system inflammatory illness. Yes. I just, I'm not interested. Nope. Yeah. And, and, and so like, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that yeah. I'm his protective shield. Right. right. And that, right. and until he gets to a place where he can put, where he can, where he can get the vaccine um, and then he can, and then I can go and relax, you know, a little I will bit. say that this may be one of the only situations in which parents of teenagers like me are like, oh, thank God I have a teenager. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> there are other times when I'm like, oh, I wish they were younger. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's still fun, but the anxiety <laughs> level of like, oh my God. Yeah. Anybody? Yeah, no, I know. I completely agree with you. I think um, there are a couple other um, items that I definitely have top of mind that I want to make sure we talk about. But before we do that, let's take a break. Perfect. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, okay, so as we were just discussing, um, one thing that I think is very important for non-scientists to understand, and I get this a lot, is that, um, you know, why are we changing our minds a lot? Um, so as you were mentioning, we are still learning. We do mm -hmm. not know all that we need to know about SARS-CoV-2. We don't know everything about the disease COVID-19. We are learning. And us scientists and physicians are learning along with everyone else. We probably maybe read more <laughs> and read about it more exhaustively and more frequently. But the point is science, that is what science is. It's always evolving and changing. And we learn more every day as more science and research and patient data comes to us and we, we bring that together. So that's something I definitely, I know that's kind of out of the scope of doses, but it's in scope in the sense that we are learning that we may need a fourth dose to keep that antibody, that cash in the blood high. And we may need future doses. We may need annual doses, but the, that's the way science is. It's always evolving. Um, it's kind of what makes, it's what drove me into science in the first place. It's exciting. It's new. It's never boring. But because mm -hmm. of that, it's always changing. Mm -hmm. And it, people outside of this profession, it can make it seem like, God, you guys don't know what the heck you're talking about. That's right. That's right. But I, you know what I would, I would say, and I think you said a little bit of it in the, the first couple of episodes is that we don't do a good job communicating that to our no. patients. And I think that a lot of the times we are, we tell them things in a definitive manner Yes. that makes it feel like, so now if you come to somebody and be like, this is the cure. And then you come back and you're like, uh, well, remember when I said that that was the cure? Yeah, uh, actually there's another cure, <laughs> you know, you need and another like, cure on top of that. Cure. There's another cure or, or actually that, that actually had bad outcomes. And like, so we shouldn't do that. Right. And so right. The, the thing is, the thing is that like, when we're talking about, and, and, and actually, if I, if I may, I want to go a little bit into the way that I talk about these things in terms of risk benefits and alternatives mm -hmm. to try to understand exactly what decision you're going to make. Because at the end of the day, people want to know, Hey doc, should I get a booster or not? Should I get an extra dose or not? Like, mm -hmm. what do I, what do I do? You right. Know? And I think that, um, I, I, I think it's important to say a couple of things. The first thing that I think 
we want to say, and, and, and Amy said it at the top of the, at the top of this uh, podcast, which is that it's we, we acknowledge that we are not in an equitable situation when yeah. it comes to vaccine access for right. everyone. Right. Right. We acknowledge that um, it's hard to talk about boosters when folks haven't gotten their first dose. You mean third dose? Their third dose. Well, it's hard to talk about or fourth extra dose. Doses. Yeah. Any it's dose. Hard to talk about extra any doses. Dose. Yeah. Any dose. If when when folks haven't gotten even their first dose, mm-hmm. and so I think it's really Agreed. important to, to to highlight that. Yep. That we really don't want the energy to go into extra doses at the expense. Right. Of energy going to getting everybody their first dose. I agree. So I think that's important to say. Mm-hmm. I think I think that um, the the other things in terms of risk benefits and alternatives. When you're having to decide, hey, what am I supposed to do? What are what are what are what are the things that I need to do? So what you need to do is think about your risks, your yep. benefits, and your yep. alternatives. So when you're doing this analysis and trying to understand your risk profile. Yep. It's not your risk of vaccine. Um, it's not, it's your risk of your vaccine and then the risk of not taking the vaccine, do you mm-hmm. know? And it's not the, it's, it's, it's supposed to, it's, it's the benefit of the taking the vaccine yep. and the benefit of not taking the vaccine, mm-hmm. right? That's how you're supposed to do it. It's not the risk right. of the vaccine and the benefit of not taking the vaccine, right? That's right. Not how you're supposed to pair that together. And so what I try to tell folks is that, okay, what are your risks in, in this case of, of getting vaccinated? And the, and the risks are side effects. That's yeah. all the risk is side effects. Okay. Yeah. And so when we're talking about, and, and we'll do a podcast on the side effects uh, mm-hmm. at, a, at a later time. Which we might tear down that term too, but let's continue. Okay. We might, <laughs> that might be in the graveyard. You never know. Like, listen, you got to pay attention. Things are rapidly moving here. <laughs> that help make it make sense. We're rapidly moving. Yeah. Um, but it's basically, it's basically quote, let me put them in quote, air quotes, yeah. air quote side effects yeah. that are, that are the risks of the, of t- taking any of the COVID vaccines at the moment. Right. So yep. what is that? That's pain at the site of yep. the injection site, some swelling that you yep. can get. I had my arm hurt for three days when mm-hmm. I got the Moderna shot. Yep. It hurt for three days. I was like, I can't move my arm. My, I also reacted like that with the tetanus shot. My arm was killing me after the tetanus <laughs> shot. Um, so, you know, you get some muscle soreness, you know, you can get a fever, you can yep. get muscle aches and kind of feel like you're sick, yep. right? That doesn't mean you've yep. got the illness. It just means that your body's immune system is like, oh snap, we got to fight. We got to fight. Right. <laughs> you right. just woke it up. You woke it it's up. It's in training. It's boot it's in, camp. It's in, it's in boot camp. It's like, oh snap, there's a, somebody trying to kill us, yo. Let's, <laughs> let's get out there, you know? <laughs> and so like, you're going to, so you're not going to feel the greatest, but it's not going to last two weeks. That's for sure. Right. right. It's not going to last for two weeks. Um, so you're not going to feel that great. And, and so those, those are those, those are the quote unquote side effects in a nutshell. You don't feel right. great you know, maybe, maybe you'll have some nausea. You'll have a headache. I had a headache, tired, fatigue, tired, fatigued, just not, you're not, you're not going to feel your greatest. It's going to last 24 hours, right? Max, right. Maybe 36, maybe, maybe 48, right. maybe, right. Depending right. on who you are, but then it goes away. You start to feel better. Right. Um, um, those are the, that's the risk, the risk of not taking the vaccine yep. is getting infected. So that is what you're supposed to look at. Yep. And at the beginning, I have to, I don't know if you have this, this uh, data point, Amy, but I, I don't have it for the variants, but at, but at the beginning with COVID, the beginning of COVID, mm-hmm. your, um, your, uh, possi- the possibility of getting either severely ill or dying was 25%. This was with the original COVID, COVID mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. infection, um, which means out of four people, yeah. One person is either going to get severely ill or die. So that that's your fam- that's somebody in your family if you're in a family of four. Right. Okay. That's the way that's the way to look at it. Mm-hmm. And that is the risk of not getting vaccinated. Mm-hmm. And so you're asking yourself, is that a risk I want to take? Mm-hmm. Sore arm feeling like crap for 48 hours versus one in four chance of being severely ill or passing away. Mm-hmm. Those are, that's, that's the way to look at that risk right. analysis. Right. Now the benefit part is different. That's the next tier. So the benefit part is what are the benefits of getting vaccinated? Right. Which is not get, 
not having that 25% over your head, right? Like <laughs> making sure that you are protected from, from if it was 25 with no vaccine, now it's down to one or, or 2% or 5% maybe right. with, the va- with the vaccine. It's much lower. Yeah, it's much, much lower. It's much lower. It's mm-hmm. much lower. You, you have less anxiety. You can go out into the world. You're not worried about that, that cough ball that Amy talked about last week about walking into that the cough freshly ball. coughed air, the freshly coughed air. You're not worried about that. And you, you know, you, you feel great. The benefit of not taking the vaccine mm-hmm. could be that you don't have anxiety about these side effects. That's, right. the, that's the benefit, right? Yeah. Um, and then, and then there's the alternative that, but you have to add that to your analysis. So what's the alternative to the vaccine at this moment in time for COVID there is, there's nothing except for like, maybe perhaps getting access to antivirals if you're really sick and mm-hmm. hoping that they kick in and that you don't have a severe illness, but then you have to go to the hospital. Who wants to do that? Nobody wants to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. The there are masking forever, staying in your house. Yep. Never going right? anywhere. Never yep. going anywhere. Right. And, mm-hmm. and honestly, this is, this is what we've got today. Does that mean that's what we're going to have in five years? No. It doesn't mean there might be something better in five years. Maybe there's a better vaccine in five years, right? That they're, that they're able to create that. It's Mm -hmm. like a one, one and done the dream, right? The one and done. Yeah. Um, Maybe there's a treatment. That's a one and done treatment that you get sick and then you can get treated. And it's like a one and done deal. It's not a big deal. Right. Right. We don't know what's on the horizon. We're just talking about what we have today and what is the alternative? What is the alternative today? And the alternative right now is that if you're not getting vaccinated, you got to keep your mask on. We beg you, <laughs> keep mm-hmm. your mask on yep. and, and try to stay as isolated as possible so that you stay well. That would, right. be, the, that would, be, the, that would be the alternative to getting vaccinated. Right. I agree. I think that, no, that was wonderful. I think having that risk benefit analysis and kind of explaining is really important. I think sometimes people um, also factor in, and, and I can understand this, um, al- although I, I don't think we should do this, but the convenience factor, right? Like it, you mentioned this earlier, it's not always convenient. Like some people can't get time off. They, it might, they might not have very good, um, you know, computing system or something to, to get that appointment, or they may not have a ride. Um, you know, there's, there's this, this all goes into like inequity as well, but um, there is this convenience because some of these editorials and articles I've been reading, people are like, well, you know, the COVID is in a low, right? I'm going to say a low because I, you know, the pandemic is not over. It's not over folks. This Should is we get our, a one? Should we get this a is a, one? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> it's in a low, it's over. in a, it's in a low. Um, but anyways, um, you know, people are like, well, you know, it's not super convenient. Um, you know, I can't get time off work, you know, whatever. And I, I totally get that, but going and getting vaccinated, um, it's an inconvenience if you have to go to the hospital. It's an inconvenience if you cannot work, say for weeks on end. It's an inconvenience if you die. I mean, it's that's a huge, and, I but mean, also- you, I mean, I, I think it's important for us to say, I, I, I think it's imp- like, I can't, I still can't believe, honestly, as a physician, I cannot believe that employers are not giving time off to- Agreed. Time. Agreed. That, that's I don't, ridiculous. I can't, I can't understand it. I'm like, wait a minute. You're, st- you're, st- you're not giving time off and then like not giving sick time if they don't feel well after the vaccine. Like, yeah, what? That, that's not a humanitarian thing to do at all. Agreed. At all. Agreed. So I think that like, first of all, we're making a plea. If you're an employer listening to this, like give right. your people time off. Come on. Right. Out. You know what? Or better yet, this might, this might even have the vaccine clinic come to your work. Right. And just, you know, get a, get them all vaccinated. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think reach out to your local hospitals, right? Like reach out as an employer. I'm saying as an employer, not as an employee, that's yeah. not your job, but as an employer, I mean, I can't believe I'm like, I hear this and I get so upset because I'm yeah. just like, come on, man. Like right. you're, you're, you're penalizing people for trying to protect themselves against the pandemic. So that, that is also entering the narrative of, yeah. All right. Well, it's not that bad anyway. Let me just, you know, I, I don't want to deal with, I don't want to deal with, you know, right. with my, with my boss screaming in my ear about, or taking away my sick time for this. I don't want to use my sick time or my vacation right. for this. 
Right. right. Like you should, right. that should not be, that should not, that be, should not be an issue. Yeah, should exactly. Issue. You should so be able I, to get that's the time very, off. Yep. Very upsetting. So I think that that's true, but as, as this continues, as we're yep. still trying to sort this out, um, getting extra doses are going to continue to, to fall into this, mm -hmm. um, where mm -hmm. it's just like, come on, man, I got, I got, I got this, I got this thing. And again, I think it's really important for us to stress that it's not that the doses that you have aren't, aren't working. That's not, that's not what we're saying at all. Right. And that's not why these extra doses are in the conversation. They right. are working. It's right. just that it's not as high, right? That wonderful, awesome 95% number. Well, we don't, it's, not as, it's just not as high. We just don't, don't have as much cash in the blood. We don't have cash in the, we, you know, we need, we need, we need antibody cash. We spent it. It's been spent. <laughs> right. It. it just, spent. because antibody breaks down over time. It's just the way it is. It just, it's a, it's, it's natural. It breaks down. Right. Oh. And that's okay. That's okay. There's a, there's getting, a bulldog, a there's a bulldog getting uprising. A bulldog, bulldog visitor. A bulldog um, uprising. And, and I think that like, what's important to say is that that's not true of other viruses. All the viruses are different. And right. there are other viruses that you've gotten vaccines for that you don't have to deal with all of this. Right. Problem, right. Like that's, that's 100% true, but this is just a different type of virus. Every it's virus. Sneaky. Yeah. Every virus is different. They behave differently. It's super sneaky. This is the way that this vaccine is, 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 um, manifesting itself. And, and this is, you know, we're just trying to keep you with us from now until right. you are supposed to exit the universe. I have, <laughs> not, I not have before. agreed, agreed. I have there are now two more things that I would, I would like <laughs> to embark okay. on. Yay. Embark on. Would you like to take a break? Oh, let's, let's go ahead and take a break. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> <laughs> Who's our first sponsor going to be? Do you think? Well, I have, I told you, I have a, I have somebody who some kind is, of running shoe because of our marathon training. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I should send you, um, well, no, I have more time. So I will, I will, I'm, I'm not going to have more time pretty soon. I've got a couple of consulting gigs coming. Ooh, so. nicely done. But, um, over this week, um, I'm going to look, I signed us up for sponsorships through oh. a thing called Podcorn, but oh. we have to like, we have to like pitch to them. That sounds so, illicit. Pardon me? Odd corn. I know. I was like, oh. I know. It... But anyway, right, I, anyways, I, yeah. there's, there are opportunities there. But then I told, there's a, the, one of the consulting gigs that I had, she said she has funding for this type of content. Oh. So, yeah. So I'm going to try to, that's why I'm saying don't give up on the. On oh, the... yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, okay. So all right, I have so two, yeah. two things. Okay. So um, I'm going to bring up the kind of more. I would say exciting and unexpected and surprising thing first. So um, there was a, there's a man in Germany. Oh, yes. <laughs> there, man in Germany. there is a man in Germany, at least one that we know of who decided in order to make money that he was going to get as many vaccines as possible because he would get dose one and dose two on a card. And then he would go to another clinic and get dose one and dose two. And he would sell these cards to people who didn't want the vaccine. Bad idea. Anyone listening, please do not do this. But it turns out that um, he was figured out by the people that were giving vaccines over time. They were like, you know, we feel like you've come in here before for you've had your whole, you know, three doses. And anyways, he ended up having at least 87. Oh, my God. At least 87. So, so interesting, right? Not probably not a good career choice, but what not I will say is one career. thing we know about him is he's very fully protect, protected. <laughs> what a case study. If this guy gets COVID, right. then, then, then we will, then we will, we will be like Mia Koopa. <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing that this is what, now this is only one. So, you know, having like a, a study of one is, you know, in science terms, it's not ideal, but he does not have any health issues as a result. And this person is, um, I believe older 
I, I believe I read, we don't know person's name and I, I wouldn't say it, but I think this person is like late fifties, early sixties from what I've read. Mm -hmm. um, so not like, you know, a young 20 year old, <laughs> um, but has had no ill, has had no health issues as a result of at least 87 doses. Now, the reason why they say at least 87 is because when they backtracked and figured out all the different names and things he's used from what they can tell, is that it was 87, but he's not going to admit to any more. So it's possible there were more. more. Oh my gosh. I know but, when you told me about this story, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. So, and I thought at first, I'm like, this person must be really um, like paranoid about COVID. But the answer to that was no, he was just trying to make money by selling vaccine cards to vaccine hesitant. So, um, but I do love his enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I also love that he was like, this vaccine is safe. Oh, that's Ob right. Obviously, I will get oh. at least 87 doses. I will get at least 87. That's so, right. so that's yeah. why like, I was thinking about yeah. what we should name our um, episode. And you know that there's that book, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. I was thinking yeah. one dose, two dose, 87 dose. That's it. <laughs> Doses. <laughs> And there you have it, folks. That's the name. One dose, two That's dose. The Although of the name of our episode. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, so that was so that's so that's the one thing that was, you know, interesting and pleasantly su surprising, you know, that he n of one. So again, only one human um, seems to be doing fine and obviously very protected. I, I would love for him to be allow people to study his immune response. I don't know if that's happening, but I would be very, very excited. Like yeah. I was like, Ooh, okay. Yeah. That's a case. The other, study, folks. The other thing that I wanted to discuss that is a in, in the context of additional doses and the immune response. And this is where mixed messaging with science is happening. Like we've been mentioning, there are some people that are saying you're going to tire out the immune system. You know, if you get, if you get all, you know, continue to get all these doses, you're going to, you're going to tire it out. It's not going to get any better. It's not going to change. Um, I, and again, it is mixed, mixed messaging, which we need to have a unified front. Scientists are not good at that. The problem is that we're all learning and evolving and getting new knowledge. And we're not all thousands of us are hundreds of thousands of us like having zoom meetings to unify our message. <laughs> we also, we, we also, I have, also have to add, we also really love to debate for the sake of debate. So oh, just put oh, that out there. Yeah. <laughs> Scientists. That's like one of our favorite things. The people yeah. that go into science, we love right. that. Yeah. And we like to pick apart little details. It's that's, you know, it's one of our favorite things to do, but right. casting that aside, I, my opinion, and again, I am, you know, just one immunologist, um, and you could add to this as another fellow immunologist, um, I don't envision us tiring out the immune system or, you know, um, I think that having additional doses, spacing them, finding out that at about the six month mark when your, your antibody cache is lower, we know that getting that additional dose brings your antibody cash up higher. I'm not, I'm not seeing anything that's convincing me or concerning me about becoming tired or not responding to these. I mean, is, you, there is there precedent for that? Um, yeah, there, there is. So like, as an example, if you have a chronic cancer, mm-hmm you can have immune exhaustion. Like one of the particular cells in our immune system called a T cell, that's like, we often think of those as the killer cells. They can get exhausted, they can get tired and they can kind of not work as well, but that's a chronic situation. That's where you have cancer like in your body for you know months, years yeah. on end. It's hard to compare to can cancer is like this rapidly evolving, yeah. like, growth and of cells like they're just going like this so it's not it's not like infection infection dies <laughs> well and that's the thing with the vaccine is we know if you look at the clinical data the clinical trials data from the mrna vaccines it's like a snapchat message the instruction is put in 
and it disappears within 24 hours, just like a Snapchat. It's acute. It's incredibly acute. It's not chronic. You're not having, that's the vaccine. Um, you know, so if you are actually sick with COVID and you have severe illness, that's going to be hanging around longer. But my point is immune exhaustion usually comes from chronic, long lasting um, illness like cancer, something acute, short, short lived, like that 24 hour Snapchat message of a vaccine, very different. So Anyways, I just wanted to dispel that because that's some of the misinformation that I'm seeing when I read about, you know, what are people saying about the vaccine and, and doses and kind of like, what is the fuel for people to say, oh, I don't want to get another one. Mm. And the yeah. answer is it's not exhausting the immune system. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's not, not. It's not. There's no. There's no evidence to suggest that that happens right now with this vaccine at the right. moment. Anyway, I exactly. believe us that if that was the, if that were true, that would come out. It would eventually right. come out. There's so many people studying this. That it would eventually come out that you know they're there. And the way that we see this is that they they actually graph the response of the immune system to look at it. Um, to get like a bird's eye view of what exactly yeah. is happening. And, and if we saw that there was no difference, this is very right. common in science when, when we do experiments, right? right? It's just, if there's no difference, we do a right. statistical analysis and say, not worth, we would actually say not worth it. Right. <laughs> not worth right. it to get another booster or to get another dose. It's not, it's not worth it. Right. Um, but that's not what's actually, what's right. actually happening yeah. at the moment. And um. Yeah, so I think that that's a that's a good. There are a lot. There are a lot for them. I mean, I think. What, what I, hang on one second. I have to tell you, I think that we're being a package is being delivered, which uh, is clearly a, a breach of security. That's right. <laughs> clearly, you've been saved from being mugged by the mailman. I mean, yeah, that's it for delivering the thing you, that I bought. I, I was going to ask you, what do you say about what, what is your response to, um, well, there, this is just a ploy to, for the pharmaceutical companies to get rich. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, the pharmaceutical companies making vaccine is actually not like a huge moneymaker. Um, one of the things that I think people probably don't think about is that there's so much research and development and time and energy and money that goes into developing the vaccine, producing the vaccine, shipping the vaccine. Um, there's just so much on the kind of back end of vaccine development that it's actually um, a lot of companies like break even, or even in some cases, if a vaccine never like makes it to market, they lose money. So I don't see, I don't see vaccines as being a money maker, like at all. Um, also, if not enough vaccine doses are being used, they'll, they'll go bad. And then they, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I feel like, what do you think? I, that's what I have yeah, I read. Think, I mean, I think it's that's something that's hard. It's hard. It's hard for, for folks that are not in it to understand how they wouldn't, because I guess the response to that would be like, well, the government right now at the moment poured a whole bunch of money into Pfizer and Moderna to, mm -hmm. to be able to produce, to do all of those things that you're actually, talking about. that's not true with Pfizer. Did you know that? Uh, no, I didn't from what I saw. No. Yeah. So, um, you know, that our former president, um, who I will not name, but, um, so there was all that money for oh, what did operation. They call it? it was, it was warp op speed. operation warp speed. Yes. Which I hated by the way, oh, I know. because that just, again, that just made like, everything worse. So anyways, made everything worse. um, Pfizer decided that they did not want to be held to a time frame because they wanted to produce the vaccine in the most safe and efficacious way. And they did not want to be held like under a time frame and pushed. So they did not accept money from warp speed. 
So I actually had some people who were vaccine hesitant who were talking to me. Um, and I this came out in conversations and they chose the Pfizer vaccine as a result of that because they were impressed. <laughs> but what's interesting is they didn't take the money. They actually were the ones that crossed the finish line first. That's right. I don't know that's, if you remember that, right? But it was yes, just, I do, I do. So anyways, that, so yes, but you are right. There are a lot of companies that did take government funding, but, but Pfizer did not in that original initial push. So for some people that in itself was like, oh, well then it must be real. <laughs> right. Well, that's true. No, that's true. That's good to know. I didn't know that that wasn't, that wasn't really. They didn't um, really say much about it. Yeah. That wasn't really broad knowledge. Um, yeah. So they I, didn't, I was not, they didn't like brag on it as much in as the I paper, I read a, I read an, um, an oversight document about the process early on. This was back in the 20, in 2020. And, yeah. um, they, they had lumped them all J and J AstraZeneca mm. Moderna, and Pfizer in the, mm. um, in the initial funding for uh, mm. Operation Warp Speed. Interesting. Yeah, no, they, they did not take that initial. Now, if they took some after that, like once they crossed the finish line, they right. might have been like, all right, we'll pay up now. Right, That's right. a possibility. I actually don't know that, but I do know in the beginning because it was very interesting. I had some people were like, oh, I, I will use that one then. I'm like, whatever it takes. Right. <laughs> Right. Whatever it takes. I think, I think what I, what I've told people is like, listen, I, I mean, I'm not in the, I'm not in the Moderna lab. I'm not in the Pfizer lab. Mm -hmm. I don't know what these executives are talking about or doing yeah. um, at that, at that level. Yeah. Um, I understand the concern because this is not, it's not a, it's not like pharmaceutical companies right. have been on the oh. moral side of any kind of medical. Exactly. There's so we're not, we're, we're not saying yeah. that. We're not saying yeah. that, you know, I just had you right. insulin, right? So um, yeah, <laughs> I think, think that- Think Oxycontin. Yeah, had you, right? That's so, terrible. Um, yeah, yeah, it's all, it's, it's, we get it. We all, we totally get it and we totally acknowledge that. Yeah. And what yeah. I will say is that, okay, um, from what it is that I've seen, at mm -hmm. least I, I try to, I try to look at as much as I can. Yeah. Um, yeah the boosters help or the extra doses help. I'm going to get, I have to eliminate this word. <laughs> um, the extra doses, the extra doses help. It, they really do help. And, and it is the way to, as, if you are a fierce protector of your family, like I yeah. am, yeah. like then you're, you're, then it's the, it's the right thing to do to protect your family. Yep. Right. Um, yep. You know, will you, it, you, you will also minimize your opportunity of getting severely ill mm -hmm. obviously the more protection the more cash that you have to pay the debt <laughs> of, of covid right like you the more the more you have to pay it off <laughs> those bookies that are coming mm -hmm. to get you you know like that's that's the that's the uh best way to do it um you know things things haven't been great in and equitable and moral in medicine and science we know that yeah um, but what we can say from what we understand at this point in time, we wouldn't, you know, Tony Esselin would not be on a podcast, <laughs> you know, videotaping, audio taping herself, promoting something right. that she thought was harmful. I would never, I would right. never, you know, um, right. so I think that just for the we, record, neither would I. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. So we, you're talking to two, we would be the people being like, this is BS. <laughs> Yeah. Like, don't do this. You know, like we would be, we would, we would be protesting um, right. if this was not the right thing to do. And so we just, we want to, I think a good, a good like end to this. And again, yeah. we hope that you give us your questions. Yeah. Dr. Amy and Dr. Tony and Dr. Amy at gmail.com. That's right. That's Dr. Tony, T O N I, and Dr. Amy, A I M E E at That's Gmail. Right. Dot com. Yep. Uh, please send us your questions uh, if you have more questions about this. But what I think that we want to do is just make sure that you feel comfortable that you we've acknowledged that no, you're not. It's not you. It's it's them. <laughs> the them that is make the, the confusing messaging. It's not you. Right. Um, and uh, you know we want to help hold your hand through this whole process. Yeah, um, to make you feel good about the decisions that you're making, and that you're not you're not be you're not a sheep, 
You're not a you're not a sheep <laughs> following following you know blindly the government following the masses. <laughs> I don't even know where this is coming from, but like you're not. You're not a yeah. sheep. You're just not. You're right. trying to survive. And right. there's nothing worse than I have to say, you know, this is the conversation I have with some patients of, who have like hypertension and, and are having difficulties taking their medications. It's like, it's like you don't feel it today. Right. You don't feel the 180 over 100 today. Right. But why do you want to get to the point where you have a stroke or a heart attack and now right. you are disabled? Right. To now be like, I should have taken my medication. Right. Like, that's, oh. this, is, this is the stuff that I don't, this is right. what we're trying to do and why prevention is so hard right. because we don't feel it today. Today, right. you're fine. Today, you went to the grocery store and you, your mask was half on and you came out of it okay, you know? Right. And so now you feel like you don't have to, you know, it's not, it's not as bad as people are saying that it is, but yeah. my goodness, the minute that it is, the consequence is, is just, it's, you can't come back from the consequence. And, right. and I think we're seeing, it's, it's like being a parent where you see the train hitting the wall with a decision your child is about to make. Mm -hmm. And you're like, no, don't do that. And there's nothing you can do. And then they hit the wall and then they're like, should I listen to you, mom? <laughs> You well, know? the worst, I, I agree with you. And the thing that breaks my heart and immunology soul is when I hear stories or see videos of people who are deathly ill with COVID asking for the vaccine. Yes. The vaccine does not work immediately. Right. You need, multi, you need several weeks for that, you know, your first dose, then your second dose. And now, right. And it, absolutely breaks my heart that people would think on their deathbed, can I have the vaccine? Right. And the answer would be, because it's not, be, a, treatment, it's it's, not a treatment. It's not, it's not a therapeutic. That's going to, it's not a therapeutic. That's going to help you get out of it right then. Right. It's a preventative measure that that's you right. would do before you become sick and right. seeing those types of videos or hearing they, about those they're, stories. They're, they're heart wrenching. It's horrible. They're heart wrenching. They're heart wrenching. I don't want any more of those. We don't want any more. So we don't want any more. Get your first dose. Get your second dose. Yep. And get your third dose. And to be continued on your fourth dose. <laughs> and your annual dose again, Potentially. maybe. <laughs> Potentially. Just put it. Just set yourself up for it, so you're not frustrated. Just be like, yeah. all right, you know, just, just you know get what? it with your flu shot. I'm going to get as many doses as they tell me down the road. That's it. Evidence provides. That's it. All and, right. I think, do uh, yeah. we have any other questions or are we? No, we I think the, the majority the of the questions, the majority of the questions, again, we'll just put it in the, the, the Atlantic okay. article. Um, but if anybody has the, the questions that came around it were about vaccine fatigue, like I'm yep. sick of this. Um, whatevs. <laughs> we're fine. There's no pandemic anymore so like this is this is silly yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah and, and uh about how it affects your like how what are the long-term effects of all these boosters in your body yep yep you know you know it's a it's it's kind of similar to the fact that like we give these we give our children all these vaccines in one shot yep you know the five the five vaccines every two months mm -hmm. um and so like isn't this isn't this like not good is it this not good for the for the for the for the body and I I think like my answer my answer to that is just like you are being bombarded by bacteria and viruses every, every day second of every day right <laughs> you know and right. your body's fighting all kinds of things so right it's just that you you're getting in the vex the vaccines that your kid gets there are you know things that they're going to fight off there, but you're, you can't see all of the things. That's right. You can't like see that it. freshly coughed cloud. <laughs> I have not been able to stop seeing the freshly coughed cloud. I'm like, I walk like this swatting, you know, it'd be really funny is if you like got one of those little personal fans <laughs> <laughs> and you just like kind of hold it in front of you as you walk. We got to get this freshly coughed stuff. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. We're yeah. super excited and uh, join us next time um, where I think we're going to talk a little bit more about what's happening with children and yeah. COVID vaccines.
Exactly. Awesome. Until then. Until then.